Hello everyone! In one of our previous videos, we covered the basics of soldering. Today, we will focus on common mistakes that every beginner encounters or may encounter. We will also provide recommendations on how to avoid these mistakes. First and foremost, improper selection of a soldering iron, tip, and solder is a major issue. The choice of a soldering iron depends on the type of work to be performed. A powerful soldering iron is suitable for thick wires, working with motherboards, and other large components. A 10 to 20 to 30 watt soldering iron is ideal for small elements. The same applies to soldering tips. Visually, a thick tip is necessary for soldering wires and large components, whereas a thin tip is required for working with electronics. A thin tip loses heat quickly and cannot properly heat a thick wire, causing the solder to harden prematurely. When soldering elements on a board with a large tip, there is a risk of touching adjacent components, making it difficult to reach the required contact. Therefore, the tip should be chosen in proportion to the components being worked on. Similarly, the diameter of the solder should be selected based on the task. Thick solder is for coursework, while thin solder is for precision tasks. Note that thinner solder is more expensive, making it impractical for soldering thick wires. A soldering tip should never be overheated. The optimal temperature should be selected for soldering. If the soldering iron is not hot enough, the solder on the surface cools quickly, leading to a weak joint. On the other hand, excessive heating results in rapid oxidation of surfaces and solder. Overheated solder forms a dark film and does not adhere to the tip. A sign of overheating is the rapid burning of flux and rosin with excessive smoke instead of smooth melting. Flux evaporates too quickly and does not participate effectively in the soldering process. Electric soldering irons should not be left on for extended periods when not in use, as this leads to overheating of the tip. Continuous soldering at maximum temperature can damage the heating element and cause tips to wear out quickly. As a result, they will not tin properly, requiring frequent replacements, and the solder joints will be weak. High temperatures also negatively affect electronic components, which can overheat and fail. For example, IC legs are often soldered one by one or diagonally to prevent local overheating of the microchip. LEDs should also be soldered quickly to avoid overheating. Even circuit board traces can get damaged and burn due to excessive heat. The soldering iron should always be heated to an optimal temperature. A good soldering temperature allows the solder to melt quickly while adhering well to the tip. Flux should not burn out instantly but remain in the working area as boiling droplets. Maintaining the correct tip temperature is one of the key factors in high-quality soldering. Soldering without flux is a critical mistake. Flux is essential because all surfaces naturally develop an oxide layer, along with microscopic particles of grease and dirt, which prevent the solder from properly adhering. Flux dissolves these contaminants and prevents reoxidation during soldering, allowing the solder to adhere properly. Not cleaning flux residue is another issue. Rosin, made from pine resin, prevents corrosion and does not emit harmful fumes that damage insulation. It also protects the solder joint by forming a solid film. Rosin does not necessarily need to be removed, but other types of flux, such as soldering acid, must be cleaned. Acid-based fluxes are more aggressive and can corrode contacts and components over time. Even a small residue can lead to damage. Additionally, acid flux has high electrical conductivity, which can cause short circuits. Acid residues should be removed thoroughly and promptly using a toothbrush or a brush dipped in alcohol. Use acid and active fluxes cautiously and avoid them when working with LED strips, SMD components, or electronic boards. Soldering without auxiliary tools is another issue. Tweezers are essential for holding components that are too small or too hot to be touched with fingers. 
Many surface mount device resistors and capacitors are tiny, making them difficult to handle by hand. Tweezers come in various shapes and sizes, straight, angled, short, or long, to suit individual preferences. Always use a soldering iron stand. The tip of a soldering iron is extremely hot and an accidental movement could cause it to touch wires, tools, or other objects, melting them. If a soldering iron melts the insulation of live wires, it can cause a short circuit. Burns are also a real risk. A soldering stand or holder helps prevent accidents. Using a dirty soldering tip is a mistake that reduces soldering efficiency. Oxidation and dirt build up due to flux, solder, and high temperatures, making it harder for solder to adhere to the tip. Cleaning the tip with copper or brass shavings is recommended. Avoid applying excessive force to prevent damage to the tip. A special cellulose sponge can also be used. The cleaning process involves moistening the sponge with water, optionally with glycerin, then wiping the heated tip gently. Avoid using a dry sponge, as it may melt. Never use files, sandpaper, or abrasives to clean the tip, as this removes the protective layer, rendering the tip useless. Only copper tips can be cleaned this way, but they must be re-tinned with fresh solder afterward. Soldering under voltage is extremely dangerous. Forgetting to disconnect power from a circuit can lead to short circuits. This applies not only to 220 volt mains power, but also to built-in batteries and charged capacitors. Accidental contact with the soldering tip or molten solder can cause irreversible damage, burning out components permanently. Excess solder is another common mistake. Sometimes too much solder is applied to a joint. The first instinct is to reheat and remove it, but this can be risky. Repeatedly heating a component can damage the PCB traces. A safer way to remove excess solder is to use a desoldering braid, a copper strip containing flux. Place it over the excess solder, press it with a soldering iron, and slowly drag it along to absorb the solder. There are also desoldering pumps, but these are more suited for professional use. Do not shake off solder from the tip. Although it seems like a quick fix, modern soldering irons often have ceramic heating elements which can crack or shatter from impact. Additionally, molten solder can splash unpredictably, leading to burns or damage to your workspace. Instead, use a sponge or brass shavings for cleaning. Using a soldering iron for unintended purposes is another bad practice. For example, using it to strip wire insulation may seem convenient, but leads to burnt insulation, residue buildup on the tip, and contamination of solder joints. A proper wire stripping tool should be used instead. Of course, we couldn't cover all possible soldering mistakes in this video. Everything we discussed is based on our experience and lessons learned. If you have any positive or negative experiences with soldering, as well as overcoming mistakes, please share them with us. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.